Winter Takes a Holiday. A short story, by P. J. Leonard. The mountain always had snow on the top in the summer. Whenever Antony asked about it, none of the adults in the village could tell him why. It's always been like that, they would say, trying to shoo him away. Hasn't anyone ever gone up there to see why? No one ever climbs Mount Talvi, they would reply. Ah, yes, of course. There was that strange superstition that the mountain was haunted or cursed, and nobody had ever climbed up there because of it. Antony sat on a bench in the village square, staring up at the mountain. It was extremely hot. Even in the valley, the summer was sweltering and sticky, and Antony's shirt stuck to his chest from the sweat. The other mountains surrounding the village, many of them even taller than Mount Talvi, were topped by grey rock or patches of grass. All except Mount Talvi, the cap of snow, thick and bright white, showing no signs of melting in the summer sun. The other villagers bustled about their business, making their way to the bakers, the butchers, the dairy, and the tailors. Nobody seemed to find Mount Talvi that interesting, except him. Antony stood up. He had to know. Tonight he would climb the mountain and find out what was going on, and tomorrow he'd have the perfect chance. Be a good lad," said father, "and don't go wandering. I know what you're like." "I'll be fine," said Antony, feeling as though he'd said this for the hundredth time. It was that time of year when the sheep would need shearing, and the sheep were in the upper valley, a two-day hike away. Mother and father were in their hiking gear, carrying two big empty bags. When they returned in five days' time, those bags would be full of wool. All of the villagers in the valley had mountain climbing gear, even the children. It was just like having another set of clothes. Mother gathered Antony in a big hug. If you need anything, just ask Mister Carpinen, okay? Antony screwed up his nose at the thought of Mister Carpinen. Mum slapped him gently on the head. Don't look at me like that. He's a nice man. I know, I know," said Antony. "But he smells like fish." "What do you expect?" said Father, hoisting his bag onto his shoulder. "He's the local fishmonger." After more goodbyes, his parents were on their way. Antony watched them disappear into tiny dots as they headed up the winding path to the top of the valley. The sun sunk in the sky. And the tops of the peak glowed a bright orange. The snow atop Mount Talvi glowed brightest of all. Deep in the middle of the night, while the village slept, Antony slipped out of his pajamas and into climbing clothes, collected the sandwiches he'd made earlier that night, tied the laces on his thick boots, and headed out of the front door. Even in the night, it was still quite bright. The moon was big and full, shining a bluish white light on the rooftops. The mountains were dark, huge black shapes in the distance, looming over the village, except for Mount Talvi. The snow on the peak sparkled like glitter. Antony took a deep breath. Fear and excitement rippled through him as he walked through the silent village. Nobody but him was awake. Good. No need to answer any awkward questions if I'm seen. He came to the edge of the village and made his way up the steep field full of sleeping cows. He climbed over the fence and then looked up. The mountain towered over him, huge jagged rocks sticking out in every direction. He pulled on his gloves and started climbing. The cows in the field shrunk away to tiny dots below him. The village looking like a tiny toy town. The mountain went on and on, up and up, 
seeming to go on forever. Just when Antony felt like he was getting close to the top, he clambered over the rock to find, not the peak, but another wall of solid rock to climb. Antony stopped to take a break, sitting on a flat stone. The sky was getting a little lighter now, the dark mountains on the other side of the valley looking like some giant had ripped the sky like a piece of paper. He opened his bag and pulled out his breakfast, a ham and cheese sandwich with a pasty and a hot tea in a flask. He stared up at the top of Mount Talvi, the top looking as far away as ever. Brushing the crumbs off of his jacket, he stood up and picked up his bag. Antony had gone hiking and climbing with his parents a lot of times before. He'd climbed difficult mountains, and some very difficult mountains. But this... this felt different. It felt like Mount Talvi was trying to keep him away. On and on he climbed, higher and higher. The sun rose over the distant mountains. Maybe this curse is real, he said to himself. Maybe this is the curse. The mountain is impossible to climb. It just keeps going on forever. He reached up to grab onto the next slab of rock, but instead he grabbed onto something cold and soft. Snow! He looked up. The top of Mount Talvi was just above him, covered in thick white snow. As Antony stepped onto it, his boot sunk deep into it, loud and crunchy. Step by step, he dragged himself through the snow, carving through it like a ship in the sea. A cold wind howled around him. The hot and sticky summer was far below. He rounded the top of the peak and he nearly tripped and fell face first in the snow at what he saw. There, at the very tip top of the mountain, was a wooden lodge. The windows glowed a warm orange and smoke puffed from the chimney. Someone lives here. A shadow walked in front of the window and Antony dived into the snow. Peeking over the top of the white fluff, he looked at the window again. The shadow was gone. Antony was about to stand up again when he saw the front door open and he buried himself in the freezing snow again. No need to hide, young man, came a voice from the lodge. The voice was deep and rich. Come inside and get warm by my fire. Antony chanced another quick look. The door was wide open, but nobody stood there. Maybe, maybe I'm seeing and hearing things. Mount Tival was supposed to be cursed and haunted after all. He shivered. What have I gotten myself into? This is a bad idea. I should go back. He stood up, brushing the snow from his trousers. No, no, he wouldn't turn back. He wouldn't be scared like the other villagers anyway. That had been a long and tough climb. He didn't want it all to be for nothing. He had to know. He walked up to the house and, pausing for just a while on the porch, walked through the front door. The inside was warm, the light flickering from the candles that had nearly burned all the way down to the end. The main room was full of big sofas, thick rugs and paintings of nature hanging from the walls. A fire crackled merrily in the fireplace. One word immediately jumped to Antony's mind. Cozy. His feet ached, and those sofas looked really comfortable. Make yourself at home, said the deep voice from behind. Antony nearly leapt out of his hiking boots. He wheeled around, and a man stood in the hallway, smiling at him. He was slim, with a long beard that looked black, but with some bits of white, as though some snow was caught up in it. It covered most of his blue lumberjack shirt. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to, Antony spluttered. The man raised a big bushy eyebrow. Sorry? Whatever for, my boy? 
You mean for coming in? Anthony nodded. The man boomed with laughter. <laughs> Nonsense, the man said, his eyes sparkling like frost. I invited you in. Come, take off those boots and have a seat. Are you hungry? I was just about to eat. Um, yes, said Anthony, but the man was already walking away. In seconds, Anthony heard the sound of a sizzling frying pan from the kitchen. Anthony hadn't moved. For a moment, he considered making a run for it, but then his stomach grumbled in protest. He shrugged, then pulled off his boots and lowered himself into a sofa. He sunk deep into the cushion as if it was trying to eat him. Anthony groaned as he stretched out his feet, the knuckles in his toes cracking as he flexed them. He looked around the lodge. Just what was this man doing up here all alone? Come to think about it, just how did he get all of these sofas, chairs, logs and cabinets all the way up this mountain? And, Anthony scratched his head, where was this man getting the food from? Anthony felt a cold dread creep over him. Was, was he the food? He'd read fairy tales like this, and they always ended up with the child being boiled in a big pot. Maybe he really should make a run for it. But just as he was wondering how fast he could grab his boots and jump through the window, the man returned, a tray of steaming food in each of his big arms. He laid them out on the dining table. Dig in, said the man, picking up a spoon. Anthony had to fight his way out of the squashy sofa. He crept up on his tray of food as though approaching a poisonous snake. But on the plate was not fried children's ears or roasted children's toes, but a big bowl of potato soup and half a loaf of hot bread. His stomach rumbled so loud that not even Anthony could resist. He sat down, ripped off a big chunk of bread, dipped it in the soup, and scoffed it down. The warm soup ran down his throat and warmed him to the tips of his toes and fingers. Before he knew it, the bowl was empty and he was mopping up the last drops of soup with the last chunk of bread. How was it? said the man, peering at Anthony. He looked worried for some reason. Delicious, said Anthony through a mouthful of bread. Thank you, Mr... Uh... The man didn't say his name. Instead, he smiled again, clapping his hands together. Oh, good, he said. I don't ever get to cook for guests, and I have a strange taste for food. I'm glad to hear you liked it, though, young man. What's your name? Anthony, he said. And you are? Oh, I'm sorry. Where are my manners? said the man, his beard twitching. He reached over the table with an open hand. The name's Winter, he said. Anthony raised an eyebrow. That's a funny name, he said. Never heard of someone called Winter before. Winter's eye sparkled. Oh, but you have. My dear boy, I am the Winter. I am the snow that falls, I am the chill wind that howls, I am the ice on the lake and the steaming breath. I visit you every year for a few months after my friend Autumn leaves. Then, when I leave, my friend Spring will visit you. I am Winter. Anthony froze in his chair. Questions filled his head, all fighting to be said first. Winter still held out his hand. Anthony reached out with his, and then shook it. Anthony gasped. Winter's hand was ice cold, as though he'd just plunged it into a bucket of ice. The shock brought Anthony to his senses, and he finally spoke. H how? I mean, what are you doing here? Anthony waved an arm around the log cabin. This is my holiday home, he said. When my job is done, I like to come here to relax and get away from it all. It doesn't seem very wintry in here said Anthony, looking at the fire in the fireplace. <laughs> well, that's why it's a holiday, 
Winter chuckled. Come, take a seat over by the fire. I will make some cocoa. Winter cleared up the table and bustled into the kitchen. Anthony sat in the armchair nearest the fire, his mind whirring. Winter returned with two big steaming mugs. So, you, you don't mind eating or, or drinking hot things, Winter? Winter took a deep gulp of whatever it was he was drinking. I am the master of the cold, said Winter, but that is my job. Doesn't everyone like to escape their work when on holiday? Antony nodded. Yes, that makes sense, I suppose. But, alas, I cannot always escape who I am, said Winter, stroking his long beard. Wherever I go, the snow and ice will follow. So, so that's why there's all the snow on top of this mountain, said Antony, nearly spilling his cocoa in excitement. Because you're here. Winter nodded, and for a moment his eyes looked sad, their usual sparkle gone. That's the problem I have, young Antony, said Winter, gazing out of the window at the field of snow. Wherever I go, it snows. That's why I have to hide up here at the top of a mountain in a lodge. I don't want to bother other people with sudden snow or ice when it's supposed to be a warm summer's day for them. I've never stepped on warm grass or felt the hot sun on my face, and I'm fine with that, honestly. It doesn't bother me that much. I am winter, but it would be nice to feel it just once. Antony sipped his cocoa, deep in thought. Can anything be done? Can you, I don't know, leave winter in here? Winter gave a sad smile. Ah, if only it were that simple. I am the winter and everything that goes with it. I cannot leave me behind. They both sat in silence for a while. Antony felt a little sorry for winter. He thought hard, trying to think of ideas. Could, could someone take your place? Just temporarily, you know. Winter stroked his beard all the way to the tip. You might be onto something there, my boy, he said, laying down his mug and standing up. Wait here, I'll be right back. Antony heard Winter's footsteps stomp up the steps and onto the ceiling above, walking from one place to another. Maybe he's searching for something. Winter stomped back downstairs carrying a heavy book. He slammed it on the table and turned through the pages, reading fast and in a low voice. Rules and regulations, he muttered. Policy on season switches. Italian summer, the equinox. Ah, here we are. Changing the role of the season. Let's see what it says. Winter cleared his throat. <clears throat> In general, switching the season from one person to another is prohibited, and such procedures will need to be passed by Mother Nature. Wait, Mother Nature is real? Antonini spilled his cocoa again. Of course, said Winter. She's my boss. Sometimes she's really nice and friendly. Other times she's extremely scary. This isn't the kind of thing I want to try and ask her, though. But it says it right here in the rule book. If, however, the season is not working and needs to take time off due to illness, he may ask another season to fill his or her role temporarily, or ask a trusted friend to become the season for a short amount of time. Winter closed the book. Uh, that makes sense. My good friend Autumn always gets tired easily. In October, he often asks Summer to step in for a few weeks to help him. Kind of unfair, really. Summer has just finished work and is about to go on holiday herself. She tries her best, but the weather always gets a bit warm when she's around. I believe your people call it an Indian summer. Antony nodded. He'd never even thought that seasons were people. It was strange to hear Winter talking about them like friends. Winter jabbed a thick finger at the book. But ah, that's not the important part. It says that I can switch with someone. They can become Winter for a while. Which means... Antony grinned. Winter nodded. Precisely, my boy. I'm not Winter. For a while, anyway. I can leave the cold and feel summer's warmth. 
Winter's beard twitched with a wide smile, but it quickly disappeared. But who would switch with me? Who wants to become winter in the middle of summer? Winter looked out of the window, the snow outside reflecting in his eyes like a mirror. Antony sipped his cocoa. Poor Winter. He'd never felt the warm sun on his face, nor laid down in a field of grass that wasn't covered in frost or snow. Antony finished off his cocoa and laid his mug on the table next to the book. I'll do it, he said. This concludes the sample of Winter Takes a Holiday by P.J. Leonard. If you have enjoyed this story and wish to continue, you can download the complete story in ebook or PDF form from the link in the description below, available from February 28th, 2017. This download will be free. If you wish to support my work, please also consider downloading a paid novel by visiting the store on my website, the link of which is also in the description. Thank you.